Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, this is my true voice. My final form. Nah, I'm just messing with all of you. Hello, fellow Nakamas. My name is Trevor Tiger. Marco asked me if I could lend my voice to his newest script, so how could I say no? This is a special video for Marco, and going off script for a moment, I'm excited for this. And no, I'm not being paid to say that. I've read the script and I liked what I saw, so sit down, if for some reason you're not already, relax, grab some snacks, and enjoy. As we know very well, I like to keep my channel focused on theory videos. That's what I like, that's what I think I'm good at. Other than that, I do some videos playing arrangements of One Piece songs on my acoustic guitar. I like doing these, but it's kind of troublesome and expensive going to the studio and recording them. So although I have lots of cool arrangements, I can't do these videos as much as I'd like to. Anyway, that being said, let's get to the point. As some of you may know, here on YouTube, I'm a One Piece theorist, but in real life, I'm a physics teacher. And it's been a while since I've considered making a video where I could mix two of my favorite things in the world, physics and One Piece. In fact, I've already created multiple exercises during class using anime in general. In a first approach, why should I make a high school student calculate the time interval t, it'll take for a particle a, with initial velocity va, to reach a point b, in a two-dimensional movement under the action g, when I can instead make them calculate how long it will take for Kakashi's kunai to reach Sasuke? In another approach, why should I make them calculate the range of an A block of mass MA after it was pulled by a spring with an elastic contrast, K, that was initially compressed X meters, if instead I can make them calculate the range Luffy would send to Flamingo with his gear 4, or how far Luffy sent Waffle away? I mean, it's not only funnier this way, but if it can increase a student's interest or love of physics and science in general, I think it's a pretty nice thing to do. Also, it's not only about adapting common exercises in physics that we can use anime to, in fact, we can learn physics. There are a lot of conceptual discussions that we can make using anime as a theme. Before any of you mention it, I know what many of you might be thinking now. Marco, it's kind of a bad idea because animes in general don't follow the laws of physics, so it can cause misconceptions. Does anyone smell smoke? Now it's okay. I are good again. Oh, the baboon bailiffs destroyed the law of gravity. We're doomed. Don't panic. It only affects us lawyers. Why is that? Because we're the only ones who understand the law. Well, I'm no naive teacher. That being said, I totally disagree about it being a bad idea. Actually, science epistemology, the area of science and philosophy that studies the structure of scientific knowledge itself, is probably my favorite topic in science. Also, alternative conceptions is probably my favorite topic in physics teaching. I really think that we can use anime to teach physics. Misconceptions are not to be put in the trash can for a new and scientific concept to be born. Misconceptions are something to be worked on in order to achieve a proper scientific conception. All these physical impossibilities that we see, quite often in anime, are perfect for introducing scientific discussion. If I ask you, what is a logia, you'll probably say something along the wiki definition, It's a devil fruit that totally modifies your body structure into a nature element, making the user intangible. Except the hockey. Many of the viewers may find it strange a little that Oda used smoke, gas, swamp, and so on as elements, right? After all, the elements are water, wind, earth, fire, and its combinations, right? No! Although we always use these scenes as elements in RPG games and anime, they are definitely not elements. To begin with, what is an element? As the name suggests, it's a basic structure that builds the matter we see in our daily life. In Occidental culture, it happens that back in the age of Greek philosophers, the idea was that all the things surrounding us were made by these four elements, and remained essentially like that for quite a long time. Of course, nowadays we know that we don't have four elements, but an entire periodic table of them. Also, any of the initial four elements remained. Water, for example, is no element. Its molecules are made by three atoms of two different elements, hydrogen and oxygen. Well, for everything I said, it just makes sense for a character to be, in fact, elemental, if he was entirely made of, I don't know, gold, 
Mercury, lead, neon. Still within the Logia theme, probably the most interesting Logia for debate is drum roll, please. You know, the almighty god, owner of the Goro Goro no Mi, the Logia of Lightning. Well, have you ever wondered how his devil fruit makes no sense at all if we put it in our real universe? I mean, what is his body made of? Electric particles, you may say. Well, if that's the case, we're all Logia too. After all, our body is made of atoms, which consists of a positive charge nucleus and negative charge electrons. No, no, Marco, I meant electric particles, like we have an electric current in our house, the electrons. Well, if that was the case, it would be quite troublesome. After all, we know electric charges with the same sign repel each other, and this force is quite strong that the particles are very close to each other. Let's suppose an L's body has around 90 kilograms. Another way of saying this is that he approximately weighs 198 pounds. If his body was entirely made of electrons, the number of electrons would be around 10 to the 32nd power, which is the number 1 followed by 32 zeros. Considering an L's body volume is approximately 90,000 centimeters cubed, it means we have around 1.1 times 10 to the 27th power electrons per centimeter cubed. This means each centimeter square of his body would have an electric charge of approximately 1.8 times 10 to the 8th power columns. Now let's make a somewhat rough approximation to calculate the electrical force each centimeter cubed would do to the adjacent centimeter. We get to the gigantic value of 3 times 10 to the 30th power newtons, the number 3 followed by 30 zeros. For you to understand how enormous this force is, if we count all the grains of sand of all the beaches and deserts in the world, and put the equivalent number of Snorlax in a balance, the number it will show us is still smaller than this force we've estimated. Or even, this force is equivalent to around 6 millions of billions of billions of Titanics, or even, this force is equivalent to the weight of half a million planet Earths. We could even say that this is equivalent to the weight of one Big Mom. No, oh, no, Marco! I, I guess he's made of lightning! Like the ones we see in a storm! Well, that's kind of troublesome too. The plasma we see is not actually a substance. I mean, plasma is one of the states of matter. Saying someone is made of plasma is like saying someone is made of liquid or made of solid. We're not actually referring to a specific substance or element. Anyway, I could spend hours and hours talking about Enel, but I'm not doing it. Trevor Tiger, though, will probably make a video called Enel is Admiral Level. That guy is weird. Actually, one of the reasons I've done this video is because I like to ask you. Would you enjoy seeing videos where I talk about One Piece and science on my channel? You know, the community already has lots of One Piece contenders like Flying Panda, One World HD, Joy Boy, Brago, some creepy guy named Trevor Tiger, and so on. I have the feeling that this would add original content to the community, and it's something that my information would help me do in a cool way. But, as I've said, I'd like to know if you'd like to see videos like that from time to time. So please, leave your thoughts in the comment section about it, as well as possible topics you'd like me to talk about. Also, I have this desire to, one day, make a website or blog or something where I teach all the canon contents of high school physics using anime as the background. It would be awesome! But as far as I know, since I'm quite out of time lately, doing these videos would be nice for me. Ah, but before I forget, of course, I will not stop doing theories! So you shouldn't worry about that. Well, that's it for today, Nakamas. Don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comment section. Marco signing off. Phew, that was a doozy. Trevor Tiger back again for real this time. There's no more script, but I do want to say one thing. I, for one, would be excited if Marco would do this. He's got great ideas, and I'm excited to see how this plays out. If anyone's qualified for this, it's him. So thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to leave those comments. And if you want to check out yours truly, hit me up on my channel to see theories, parodies, and so on. And if you want to follow me daily, check out my Twitter page. Beware, though. My army of gifs are waiting. And we will see all of you legends next time.
I would like to thank Marco for the invitation. It was a pleasure to be here in this channel. Hashtag Team Simbi.